Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I am Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. On our 953rd day together in the Word of God, we come to Ezekiel chapter 2. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the book of Ezekiel. Thank you for the prophet Ezekiel and for your call upon his life. Help us to be stirred, to answer the call that you've put on our lives, to be a prophetic witness to the truth of your word to a generation that does not want to hear it, much as Ezekiel was called to do, a generation in exile in a land that's not our home. Father, teach us and grow us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 2. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me, and he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants also are impudent and stubborn. I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns are with you, and you sit on scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. And you shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Be not rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. And when I looked, behold, a hand was stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll was in it. And he spread it before me, and it had writing on the front and the back, and there were written on it words of lamentation and mourning and woe. That is Ezekiel chapter 2. Who is this one who speaks to him? And he said to me. Well, it's the one who appeared above the expanse in the likeness of a throne. One like a son of man. A, a likeness with human appearance. And he speaks. It's Jesus. It's the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, the radiance of the glory of God, the manifestation of the majesty of God, he's speaking and he's commissioning Ezekiel, Christ Jesus, before his incarnation, God appearing in human form, speaks to Ezekiel, and he calls him Son of Man. Now, that is very interesting because Jesus, when he came into this world incarnate, as prophet, priest, and king, Ezekiel here is prophet and priest, he comes and his favorite way to be addressed, his favorite way to refer to himself is son of man. And Jesus called himself son of man because he's coming as a prophet and a priest and a king. He's coming as the glorious one who's foretold in Daniel chapter 7, but he's also coming in the line of the prophets as the final word from the Father the one spoken in the last days, the word made flesh. So the Son of Man calls this Son of Man to stand on his feet and speak. And just as Jesus at his baptism was anointed by the Holy Spirit for his ministry as Messiah, so Ezekiel, verse 2, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. Now the Spirit is speaking, Jesus is speaking, the voice of God is speaking to Ezekiel. Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to a nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. God's people are rebellious. 
not always to the extreme, but to one degree or another, we have a sinful nature. We are wayward, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Word of God, but we also have a stubborn, sinful nature, and we're influenced by the world, and we tend to be rebellious. And it is the calling of the prophetic voice to speak the truth to the people of God and call them back. It is not the responsibility of the prophet, of the herald, of the mouthpiece of God. It is not the responsibility of the prophet to ensure that people hear and listen and obey. Verse 5, whether they hear or they refuse to hear. Verse 7, whether they hear or they refuse to hear. The important thing is to speak the word of God, to speak what God has said. Calling for repentance, calling for faith, calling for a return to the ways of the Lord. And the warning is, whether they hear or refuse to hear, don't you be rebellious like that rebellious house, verse 8, but rather open your mouth and eat what I give you. Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 36, had to eat the scroll of the book. And the prophets, this is an internalizing of the word of God. As a pastor, if I am to proclaim the word of God to others, I have to first take it in myself. It has to be preached to my heart. I have to believe it. I have to accept and trust. I can't be rebellious like the world or rebellious like those among God's people who are rebellious. I must take and eat. You, if you're going to tell others about Christ, if you're going to be an ambassador for Christ, he must be your Lord. He must be your king. You cannot tell others about a king that you yourself are not obeying. That won't work. And so we have to take the word of God. We have to eat the word of God before we can speak the word of God with clarity and conviction and power. We need the commissioning and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's given that to us in the Great Commission. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. That's how he said it in Matthew. In John, he said, as the Father has sent me into the world, so I am sending you. We need the authority of the commission of the Lord Jesus, just like Ezekiel had. We also need the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. So we need the commissioning of the Son of God. We need the power of the Spirit of God so that we can speak the Word of God with faithfulness and without the fear of man, whether they listen or refuse to listen. So many times, pastors, church leaders get off base because they think, well, I've got to put it in such a way that people will listen, people will respond, people will accept it, people will think it's good. That's not, that's not our responsibility. We're now trying to do the work of the Holy Spirit in that case. Holy Spirit changes hearts through the Word of God. We are just the mouthpiece to take in and give forth the Word of God. Will we be faithful to that call? Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who has commissioned us to be his ambassadors. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who lives in every believer and who empowers us to be faithful witnesses. Make us faithful to your calling. May we speak the word of God. May we testify of the Son of God. May we glorify and proclaim the kingdom of God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Ezekiel has had his vision of God, and he's been called and commissioned to the work. Tomorrow, we're going to go back to Revelation and pick up on Revelation 13 before we come back here the day after tomorrow to pick up Ezekiel chapter 3. I hope you have a blessed day in the Lord.